It's like this. Who gonna bring it to the table? Boss talk. Who your girlfriend favorite? Boss talk. Check it, check it, check it. It's a unique hustle. It's your boy ECO, and I'm here with the lovely, amazing, official Miss Jamaica. What's going on? Not, not, you know, my dad walk on. Well, this guy right here don't need no introduction. He be on the internet a lot. You guys done seen him. You know, he talk about these fights all the time. Some niggas don't even agree with him, but some niggas do. We just don't know. I know he got some haters out there because you ain't got no haters. You ain't popping, man. Check it, man. Black Fight Fan TV is in the building. What's up, brother? How y'all doing? How you doing, Quinn? How you doing? How y'all doing? Man, doing? How thank you doing? for coming on the show, man. It's been a long time coming. Yes, yes, it have, man. I'm proud of you. I'm man, proud of you. I'm proud man, of both of y'all. Me, let's get back to me, you know. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, proud of me. Uh, yeah, I've, I've worked. I've done everything I could to make sure that this platform is great, along beside my wife. And, uh, yeah, um, it hadn't been easy. No, I'm just <laughs> You know, it's hard to come up out of Dallas, man. Man, it's hey, hard man. to come up out of but Dallas. But being that I'm not from Dallas and she not from Dallas, mm -hmm. I think that I think. But we in Dallas. But we've been we. I've been in Dallas for over thirty here years. For a long yeah, time, so mm -hmm. I've been coming Keep out playing. here since the seventies. Mm -hmm. So at the end of the day, most of these niggas ain't really got what I got going. I can since the seventies. Yeah, seventy nine. You got to realize I was young. Seventy nine. You wasn't even ten. It don't matter. My auntie live over on Beckley and Saint since the fifties. <laughs> Yeah. Come on, man. We had oh, to come okay. out here. I didn't even want to come well, out I'm, here. I'm asking you. Did, well, did you go? Did you go? To, have you ever been to Bigley Park to eat a free lunch? Yeah. Right. Come on, man. Right. I, they were giving it away. He qualified. That's the, he the qualified. park right there at a house. <laughs> he you just qualified. walk out the front door. She right. They right there. He qualified. <laughs> he qualified. <laughs> so, but but let's get back to you though. I'm trying to switch this, nigga. I know what you tried to do. <laughs> <laughs> but you know the funny thing is that when I'm listening to your voice, your voice is so calming and soothing and stuff like that. So. I, I can't think of you um, getting hype when you're talking about fights. fights and stuff because he's just so, you know, like those radio voices laid that back. is laid back like, yeah, this is the quiet storm. and this, <laughs> That's how your voice sounds. Cece, on the other hand, <laughs> I didn't know how she can do it because yeah, her voice go. goes like up yeah, here. Yeah. But your voice, you don't, mm-mm. Yeah. You're like the level headed, like yes. calm tone, like don't don't get too hype. This is just chill. Nah, type yeah, of person. I think the nigga like to see the hypeness, but he just don't activate don't himself. Activate. I can blow up. <laughs> I can you know, I can go get excited a lot, uh, especially with boxing. Boxing is so it's so much passion in boxing. You know what I'm saying? It is the most passionate sport out of all the sports. More than football? More than football. Because I, I can hear, I, I hear I some football. people talk about these cowboys, and let me nah, tell you. No, nah, boxing is on the... Boxing, look, I'm going to tell you something. You have to pay to see your favorite fighter mm -hmm. on TV. Mm -hmm. So if you paying to see $75, $100 to, to see somebody fight, you love them. Mm -hmm. You know what you I'm saying? You put skin in the game. You love them. And then, and then to sit on the floor to... to to say Floyd Mayweather, it's ten thousand mm dollars. -hmm. Sit on the floor. Mm -hmm. You and your lady, it's twenty thousand dollars. To sit in the nosebleeds is five hundred dollars. You know, mm -hmm. and, and and then you got to fly out there, buy a hotel room, stay out there, go to weigh ins. You know what I'm saying? Boxing fans are the most dedicated fans. You can watch football for free. You can watch soccer for free. You can watch all that other stuff for free. You can't watch boxing. Not boxing. Let's get down through there. So, did you always love boxing as a kid growing up? Uh, yeah, yeah. I've always loved boxing. Um, I grew up. From how old? When you say kid, I'm talking about like I mean, five, I, I, six. I, I, I love the Sugar Ray Leonard. I love the Mike Tyson. You Were know you practicing on people like at home, oh, yeah. like I used fighting to, I all used the kids? I, I love fighting. I, I you have brothers? A lot. Uh, uh I have I have, a, I have a younger sister. She we didn't grow up together necessarily. Okay. We had a little time together, but not a lot. You know what I'm saying? Uh, Is but sister by your dad or mom? My mom, my mom. Okay, so you weren't living with your mom. I lived in my mom's house for about fifteen, sixteen. Why you were giving too much trouble? Yes, <laughs> yes. I was, I, she couldn't handle you no more. I wouldn't say she couldn't handle me. Uh, my mom, I, I, my mama is a great woman, strong woman, and. I couldn't. I couldn't handle her rules. Let me say mm. that. I, I couldn't say. I couldn't say that. I couldn't handle her rules. I wanted to be uh, bad. The bad guy. You know. Okay. Where was dad? Um, my dad was in prison. My the majority. Your entire life. No, the majority of my youth. 
How old and were then, you when he went? If you remember. Um, I'd say my dad left my life probably uh, around three. Oh, so you didn't three. really get any impact from him where, you know, having a father figure around, you could say, well, you know, this is what I learned. He went at a very young age. You didn't have that with him. Um, but I didn't with him. But my mother, um, my mother had some amazing men, and that she was my sister's father mm -hmm. was uh, he was a street dude, but he was a great man. Okay, he, he valued education, um, and um, and he was very uh, <laughs> he had a real good talk game. How old you know was you? How old was you? You when you did your dad stay locked up till you fifteen, sixteen, or? Uh, he he did a, a long stint. He came home. Uh, but I was. How old was you? Uh, I would say he, like he came home probably when I was about twelve or thirteen. Did he give you any of them letters with the you know with the right? Yeah, with the, with the, come on now. With the, you know with you the got Mickey to have Mouse the letter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He done painted on it. Down Nigga down might send you a handkerchief or yeah, anything yeah, in that yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah I know. Yeah. I, I'm gonna get that with you. Yeah, 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 yeah. I got all that. You know what I'm saying? I got all. Especially when you know he really trying to get his life, trying to get it together. You know what I'm saying? But you know, around that time, man, you know, I was. Didn't want to hear it. No, nah, you know what I'm saying. And then At least you know, he tried. Yeah, he tried. You think about it now. He, he tried. tried. You know, but me and my father, we didn't. Uh, me and my father, truth be told, we didn't get a connection till I was like 20 years old. Yeah. yeah. How 20. did that connection come about? Um, he got out of prison the last time, mm -hmm. and he was serious. Like even to the because at that at that point in time, I was full fledged in the streets. Mm -hmm. I was out there doing my thing, and he knew that. And he knew that, and he came home, he got a job, worked from the bottom, and he was calling my phone. In the beginning, the initial conversation was like, bro, what you calling me for? I don't mm -hmm. even want to talk to you. What, what? Right. You know, he, maybe he, me cussing him out and stuff like mm -hmm. that. Uh, and, you know, because at this time, I'm a, I'm a street person. Right. You know what I mean? And so, um, and he just kept, he stayed persistent. I mean, he stayed persistent like a year straight, just That's good. following me around or you know, until you gave until in. I gave in to to where we could just have dialogues and stuff like that. And where whereas if I didn't hear from him, like okay, what well, is what is do that? You know what I'm saying? You know, it, maybe he done fell back off or something like that. You know, he he stayed with it. He he was committed to that. You know I like I mean? that. Yeah, he and was, kudos yeah. to dad for that. Well, you he, know, I my like dad that. Has recently, like over the past, like like three years ago, he passed away. Oh. Oh, I'm wow. so but sorry. We had, a, we had a relationship and it was but very strong. Good. That's all very strong. I love my father. He was dope. And, you know, I want, it's like, how can we relate that to a lot of people out here who can't forgive their father for not being there, who won't give them the time of day? Because when I look on situations like that, you have some people who do that and then their father passed away and then I'm like, man, I wasted all that time hating him and now he's gone. I wish he was here. What would you say to that young kid who is hating their dad right now and still have their dad right now but not giving him time of day? What would you say to that young mm. boy? Um, I say Or to, young man? I mean, I say this and I say this all the time on my show on Trill Boxer Talk. It's just you you always have to just, just keep that line open. You know what I'm saying? Talk to him. I'm not saying that you... Just, just, just be, just, just, just give them a chance, you know. And I know that's going to be hard because I know a lot of people have gave their father a lot of chances, but just, just give them a chance and just, just, just don't give up on them, you know. Don't give up on them. And I mean, and it's kind of, it's kind of really, it's kind of hard for me to say like right now because y'all are asking me that off the, off the muscle. <laughs> but I, but in the, in those moments when mm -hmm. my, like when my dad was dying and stuff like that. I have shows and stuff like that where I talked about that stuff intricately um, because it was a very rough time when he was dying. Because, because y'all built that we big we bond. Built it, we built it. And, and, I, and I know it can be done. Mm -hmm. I know it can be done. So I, it's hard for me to accept somebody's hatred for their parents or what mom or dad that maybe had left them or something like that because I know what we went through. What's the thing you've learned the most from him during that time? Well, my dad's last words was to me, not last words, but the most impactful words to me as he was dying. He was like, I always keep it true, like you say on that show. Keep it true, like you say on that show every day. <coughs> That's true. hard. You know. And he watched your shows. He watched my show. And, um, you know, he was just, uh, 
He was just, you know, that that was that was he and my and before my dad died, he told me all his secrets. The good, the bad, the ugly. Everything. And did you understand a lot Absolutely. now? Because a lot of times we don't ever understand. We hate our parents or don't know why they act a certain way or did certain things. And not to realize that it's tradition passed down. Right. Something that they went through with their parents that they don't know how to handle being a father. Right. Don't know how. Um, that's why they ended up on the streets, drugs, whatever. Because people are kids. Put it this way. I grew up where a child's supposed to know their place. You don't ask your parents certain things. You don't discuss certain things with your parents. Your parents don't know how to open up to you to say certain things. So the traditional, or they call it curse, keep passing down because you have not addressed this situation. Right. Being able to say, why are you like how you are? This is what I need from you, but you're not able to give it to me. And for them to open up and say, well, I don't know how to. My father was the same way to me. I'm supposed to be a man, and this is what an image of a man is supposed to be. But you're like, no, that's not what I need. Right. You know what I right. mean? They don't right. know how to do that. You know what's crazy is now when he's telling me all his secrets. Now, my, my grandfather, he's from East Texas. Okay. You know, he's from part? Uh, Huge Springs. Oh, yeah, yeah. You know, I know. All, Over there about Dangerfield. All, yeah, Dangerfield. Yeah. All that. And it's a bunch of them out there. Yeah. And so, so but, but he left a kid there. Now, mm. your dad, my grandfather, or your granddad. So my dad is telling me all the secrets, and he also got his brother, his younger brother, which is my uncle, mm -hmm. that I'm meeting for the first time on the side of my father as he's dying. Mm. Wow. My uncle's son and me had been in high school together. I the didn't whole know. Time. We didn't know each other. He was my first cousin. Wow. wow. Now when I'm coming up, he, my first cousin, he was. Uh, a big star running back, you know, in, throughout the city. You know what I'm saying? I don't want to put that name out there. No, that's all good. But uh, he he was a big time, you know what I mean? Right. Uh, but I was a little kid, and he was like a senior mm -hmm. and coming out. But we didn't know that we was even first cousins mm -hmm. until my father passed. And, mm -hmm. you know, we all look alike, you know what I mean? So <laughs> it was just, it was it was crazy. But, you know, it's, it's you know, you always keep that line open for your father. Cause, yeah. And, and, and and we coming out of a crisis with the drugs and all the different things that have mm -hmm. happened to us. And so a lot of people are just now really learning how to open to, up and yes, yes, learning how to cope, learning how to right. learn how to deal with trauma, learning how to overcome uh, certain things and relationships and things like that. But so. drugs is never going to go anywhere to go from cocaine to now fentanyl is a thing and pills and everything else. It's like if it's not one thing, it's next. People don't know how to cope with reality. They want to numb themselves from reality. That crack epidemic was hard, though. It yeah. was tough. Yeah, that was, was hard. That was hard. It was tough, but it was definitely something that uh, many people, you know, uh, I learned how to count money during that era, so I'm not <laughs> tripping. You know, I understand yeah. I was going through some things, dealing with situations, but if it had not been for that early economical system, you know what I'm saying? Then right. I probably wouldn't be able to be a mind state to where I thought on a high dollar amount. Right. You know what I mean? Right. Like, because usually a person that was not exposed to a lot of cash, he wouldn't know how to think to even handle a lot of cash, right? Right. right. So what happened early on with you far as you bumped your head a little bit? Let's talk about that. Uh, I mean, I'm from... I say it all this. I say it like this. I was I was born and raised in Oak Cliff. Oak Cliff. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, we know the deal over there. I mean, I, mean, <laughs> I was born and raised in Oak Cliff, but I mean, but I, I I've lived all over Dallas. I lived in DeSoto and Cedar Hill and stuff like North that. North Dallas too. No, I didn't live in. Never North went Dallas. to the North. No, but I but I'm gonna tell you. I tell you, I tell everybody this. I, I'm I'm Oak Cliff made, but I got some South Dallas ways. Now, I, now, I, now I, I, my, my hustle, my swag, all that come from South Dallas. Oh, you hanging out over there? What was you at, I Dixon? Bun -ton, bun -ton, oh, Bunton, -ton, double O seven, double O seven. You, know you what were I'm over saying? there? I was over there on Pilgrim, posted Ooh. up every day, all day. Everybody knew you. <laughs> Everybody from knew me over there. Down at the ghetto there, club, man, all, all that. that. They know you. I was in Little Hollywood. I was everywhere, <laughs> man. You know what I'm saying? I love South Dallas, man. I love South Dallas, especially Bunton, Rochester Park. I'm oh, yeah. Yeah. I'm out that there. Was I'm, wild. I'm on the car line. I'm what out year? there. What year was that when you early on? Uh, man, that's early 2000s. Early 2000s. Early 2000s. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Um, and uh, I was out there, but it was just, it was, I mean, it was typical. And I grew up in, I grew up in BT. 
Okay. Uh, my mother, I had a very, my mother was a very strong woman, entrepreneur. She had a shop in Big T. Had the, my mother had a, the, was the first person that I ever knew in Dallas that was doing gift wrapping in Big T. And she also had the gift baskets. And we talking late, early 90s, like 91. Yeah, yeah. 90. Well, nobody doing that stuff back then. How long did she stay in there? My mom was in Big T for years. You know what I'm saying? I literally grew up there. You know, I, I was I was there all the time. Like all the way up to what year? 96. 96. 96. Man. 91 through 96. You were over there. I was over there. You it know? wasn't as bad, though, was it? Or was it bad back then like it, is, like it, like it portrays to be now? Like no. people weren't getting killed and all that in there. Yeah, nothing. people always been getting killed. So people place. bleeding out in their way back then. Oh, you talking about that big T? Yeah, inside on the no, floor. No, 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 no. That was the first no, time I no, seen no, something no, like that. You no. seen that, right? What's that? It was a video out where uh, two dudes died. It was a couple. They were of trying to so called rob shot. somebody. They got shot. They got robbed. And robbed oh, no. You didn't even see it. No, man. This know, happened I, like a couple you months ago. You keep your eyes straight with the blinders on like that. I'm not into none of that. I would have been the same way, but my partner he sent me the video because his store in there. He was like, Yeah, yeah, man. Two people got they did a shootout in here, and then they this video was just going viral. Like it's crazy how quick things hit the internet. So you see a lot of stuff that you wouldn't have normally seen in our day. I don't. I'm. I'm. One thing about me, I'm not in the loop on so many things. Many things, yeah. So many things. If if uh if it ain't about my children or directly affect some of my young homeboys. You stay I, away from it. Yeah, I stay away from it because um I don't I don't want because I know what I used to be and what I used, how I used to get out and I don't want no parts of that and I don't want my kids We've been exposed to that. Exposed to any of that. But when you was at Big T, was they still back there in that time on Sunday going down by Glendale oh, yeah. and coming oh, yeah. back up oh, to by the yeah. racetrack oh, and then yeah. coming back in the oh, parking yeah. lot Glendale circling parking four lot, times going and the, to, the police and the know, security say, you got to that. move, man. You, got, you can't just yeah, sit yeah. in this parking lot. Yeah. I done rolled through about four times you trying to make sense. Yeah, I got to come back up to Big T. <laughs> you know, roll up down there, yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, I mean, that, yeah. That's how. That's what it was, man. The Sunday, Sunday, and Oak Cliff from Glendale to riding all the way up through Big T parking lot. That was life. Yeah, that was it. That was that it. That was us. life, man. Yeah, I enjoyed that was it. Was life, man. you know, uh, and it was a beautiful thing, and I and I missed that. I Me miss too. Those, I, I enjoyed those, those times. I miss being able to ride through Rochester. And it was hard. I miss you couldn't those get dollars. through there though. You get, but you, but it, where you was at, you had to come early to you, get in there. Where you was at, it was live. It, it was going down Wherever. right there on the street in front of people's houses. In front of people's houses. In front of Pearl uh, uh, HS Times, yeah, 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 front, yeah. Wherever, wherever it was, they man. were good times, man. man. It was great times, yeah, man. yeah, you yeah. Know, those was beautiful times. That, that's 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 the essence of Dallas, yeah, yeah. That's that's what that's the essence of Dallas. Well, tell me about how I want to know how you got into the 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 internet wave too, but do, I don't want to skip nothing. Okay, yeah. Before you get into that, I want to know. So. You said you were on the streets for a while. Yes. Did you ever go to prison? Yes. I. Um, you bumped his head. Yeah. Yeah. I went. I went to. I How old up, were you when you went? I was very young. I was. I want to say. 20, 22, 23. Okay. And how long did you go for? Like four to five years. Okay. And what yeah. was the 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 charge? Uh, hustling. <laughs> uh, on a block. Position with intent to distribute. Oh, okay. Yeah. I was. I was. Uh. I was. Um. I uh I was running around and and, and doing and selling drugs, you know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? And uh I got caught with a load, you know what I'm saying? And uh I wound up got and I got charged. And that's your first time? Yeah, that was my first charge as far as as far as drugs go. Right. But right. I had been in, you know, all in and out. Yeah, in right. little stuff. But uh that was the first re- that was the prison, the going mm-hmm. to prison and actually um getting a charge in my first time. What was your experience like and what did you learn from that situation? What was crazy is I have a unique experience with uh, prison. Okay. Um, I was, my case is out of a border town called Brownsville. Mm-hmm. Um, a lot a lot of my people that I, I'm from a, a part of Oak Cliff where it's a lot of Mexicans. Mm-hmm. So my best friend growing up was a, a Mexican kid. His and his brother-in-law was the man. Okay. And so that I was actually groomed into that. So okay. his brother-in-law was the, when stuff come in, it come to him. Mm-hmm. And so those people, you know, so the, and that was my best friend. And so I had a, like a grasp on that type of mentality. I wasn't really into like, I didn't like trap houses and shit like that. I like to, uh, 
I could see the weight and stuff like that very early on. And so, I mean, I developed a lot of relationships and wound up um, going, you know, dealing with people from across the border. Mm -hmm. And so uh, I wound up catching a case over there, or excuse me, right there mm -hmm. uh, as you cross the border. So when I went to prison, I was literally, <laughs> the start of my bid, the detention center I was in was one of the toughest immigration centers in the country. Mm. And I was the only, one of the only black dudes there. Mm -hmm. And I was there for a while. So it was a very, very unique situation for me. And then when I got there, a lot of my friends that were Mexican here in Dallas that I knew or our families knew each other, they could not associate themselves right. with me. That's right. crazy, but that's so real. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Yeah, where you're home, it's, it's crazy when you're some, somebody you went to. Because he black. You right. went to uh, a Rasmus again, or yeah. P. Russell, or buy a story with, you say their name or something, they got to put their head down and not talk to mm -mm. you. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And so. You had to hang with the brothers. It wasn't no brothers. Well, you were by your I damn was self. Brother. I was right. You ain't had nobody to hang with. I was so how many black? No blacks was there. Come no, on I'm now. A, no, I'm no. Uh, I'm gonna tell you. I'm gonna tell you. I, the, when I when I when I established myself out there and got into a situation to where we could be out there, um, the people that were with me were people that normally couldn't walk, like Cubans, Dominicans, mm -hmm. because at that particular place they weren't accepted as they not accepted. Right. As, you know that, that all all that Latinos that don't mean nothing. Nothing. That's, that's Mexico. Yeah. You know what I'm saying. And so uh, I didn't realize how serious that was till I have a friend that if you call her uh, Mexican, she mm -hmm. will cuss you out. Yeah. Yeah. I, and I try not to get wrapped up in a politics. You know what I'm saying? Um, that was just a situation to where um, I, I mean, the dudes that roll with me was probably uh Cubans, mm -hmm. uh, Puerto Ricans. It, I, I, you know, I, I didn't really see a lot, a lot of Puerto, Puerto Ricans, Ricans there. Oh, okay. Because, you know, Puerto Ricans are Americans. Mm -hmm. So they're not going to be in a place like yeah, that. Yeah. But it was the Dominicans there. It was, uh, 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 and uh, what was the other one? Cubans. Okay. Cubans. And the Cubans are going to get naturalized or get citizenship, mm -hmm. but they still have to go through the process. Right. And so uh, I met a lot of them people down there, and those are the only people that could really. How long you did were you stay the only there? Black. I was there for almost two years. Two mm -hmm. years. Because I had to go to I had to go through my sentencing process, and then um, they denied my uh, bond. It was a I was a flight risk, and um, because of the border situation, mm -hmm. and so it was a uh, it was a situation where I was there. I had to go through the whole process there. You Do you know, know Spanish very well? I, I do. I, I'm okay. I'm As I was about to say, being around all that, I, I you know, should I know. know you should survive. know. Okay. But I, I mean, people people know I, you know, from my show, I, I I mess with a lot of the people. But yeah, I, I picked it up. And plus, like I said, my and, and I don't I, and I want I want to make this clear. I don't dislike Mexicans because mm -hmm. my best friend, right, of a child, is still a Mexican. His mom, I ate bean tacos and menudo and shit and stuff growing up. You know what I'm saying? As well as William's chicken, you know? <laughs> yeah, so, you had to eat Williams yeah, over at Big T. You exactly, had to go up there and get exactly. some Williams. Well, you know, I was at Williams over there off Illinois. Yeah, you know you, I'm yeah, walking, I'm too, walking yeah. around the, to Williams at, at Illinois eating a two piece and a pepper for 89 mm -hmm. cents. Man, you know 109 with tax weight. 89 cents. Mine was 109 when I was hungry, man. When they first you. started that, that's the I know how much it was now. Then it was 99. Then it went up to, to 109. Okay. I, I, you know, I, I didn't have nothing but a dollar. I had to scrounge up yeah. pepper money. That was, it was hard. <laughs> Some days, nigga don't realize how hard it could get. Yeah. And you, yeah. But you you learn to value those times, man. Yeah. You know, that's that's why I know chicken really better than chicken that we eat in the Texas area. I'm going to just say that off the record. And, yeah. and they know who I'm talking to. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> but at any, at any rate, when you think about just the, the fact that you went down there, did you any riots break out or anything Absolutely. crazy? So you had to deal Absolutely. with riots and stuff in yeah, the midst man. of a people that you couldn't trust nobody? I couldn't trust nobody. And, and you know what's crazy is um they have like a, like a system, right? Like where the, uh, what, how they call it, the, the private prisons? Yeah. Like when in the federal system. So a lot of them, they got their homeboys on prisons and stuff. And a, a lot of the way what they do with them immigrants is they house them immigrants in them private prisons mm. and they get paid. That's how they get their money. Yeah. By putting them in beds. And so a lot of the dope dealers, 
that catch cases from all of when when you go up a level, not where I was, not at the detention center, but when you catch chain and you go up, that's when you start seeing black dudes, you know, black dudes from St. Louis or, yeah, or, yeah, or, or yeah. Detroit or whatever the case. They start pulling them in because they in people's cases and mm-hmm. stuff like that. And so, you know, that's when you start seeing more of the violence and stuff like that. But it's it's always riots. Against the with the Mexicans with they within they sell. Give me one of the craziest times where a riot broke out. What caused it? Did you? Yeah, give me one. You, it was Man, one crazy. I, I started a riot over the, watching the Cowboys. There it is. <laughs> That's the one right there. I started. You a riot over the You boys. started the riot. Yeah, yeah. I don't. I, I wherever I go because down there, soccer is everything. Yeah, soccer is everything. Yeah. And they will because it's, me, it's and, mainly and they will, and Mexican. They will, and they will, and they will. Uh, if you let them, and, and, and when I say when I say let them, if you ain't if it ain't in you, don't even do it. Don't don't try to don't try. If you just want to be quiet and just sit down, mm-hmm. just just do it. Don't do it. But for me, I I come in when I tell when they come in, they trying to do their little rules and stuff like that. I tell them I tell them I say, look, homie, watching the Cowboys and we watching the Mavericks. Y'all can watch soccer and novellas and everything, all that other time and shit like that. Watch Juan Cat and Dawn and all that. Y'all can do all that. But Sunday, we watching the Cowboys. And if the Mavericks on, we watching the Mavericks. And they it, didn't want to hear and, that. And, 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 no, they did for a while, they, either right? They, either they going to hear it or we going to do it. That's just what it is. You know what I'm saying? Either they going to hear that or we going to do it. And that's how I lay it down. Mm-hmm. And so... I think we had a situation where a soccer game or something came on, and it, and, I, and and the Cowboys was playing, and man, what well, them change the TV or say something? No, no, we had they do they do meetings, they do a lot of meetings and shit. You know yeah. what I'm saying? And so you see them getting mad and shit. I'm watching the game and shit. You know, it's going down. It's going down. They over there trying to trying to figure out. Then you know you know you go. I got one partner. You know what I'm saying? They come over there and say, man, like. They over there tripping about this goddamn oh shit. Well, well let's get to it. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Shit, I'm watching the Cowboys. You know what I'm saying? I, man, I, you know, so it was, it was, that's where most of the problems, you know, stem because um, it's just me, me with certain shit, certain stuff I'm not going to That's what happened. I tell people all the time because of the, the Houston and the Dallas thing, a lot of that stemmed from prison because mm-hmm. Dallas and Houston has different football teams mm-hmm. and they'll never come together in there because of that because they're going to support Dallas and Houston going to support Houston. Uh, it used to be the Oilers. I messed this up. And then it was the Titans and then it became the Texans, right? Right, right. So basically it's like – that's a hidden rule in there. Like we not gonna ride together when it come down to these sports, right? And right. then if it's basketball, you got the Mavericks and you got you got Houston. So and San Antonio and San Antonio. So it's like that separates everything. Mm-hmm. So do you think um, that's the big difference in the Dallas and the Houston thing? Because Houston and Dallas, when it come to music or anything, we all differ, man. Um, um, Houston, I really, I really, you know, I'm I'm a real, I'm like a super Dallas dude, so. No lock. To, mm-hmm. that, you know what I'm saying? They ain't letting nobody in, so they ain't even coming in. I'm like, I'm like a. Uh, Who is that? Oh, okay. Yeah, I mean, as far as the, the as far as the sports go, I mean, I'm like a. Low DZ. Oh yeah, I forgot Low DZ. Sorry about that. Keep no, it's going. all good. It's all good. I'll um, cut that out. Let's go. Nah, it's all good. <laughs> what, but what you re re ask that question? I don't even remember what I asked. You I got asked tripping about, on people. Yeah, it's all. good. It was about uh, basically about Dallas and Houston uh, and the differences that they have. Oh yeah, I mean, man, I really can't speak on them Houston politics. You know what I'm saying? But one thing I will good Houston is uh, they they stick together better than us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They stick, they stick together. together better than us. Um, well, they're the third, they're the third or fourth biggest city in the United States. It's going to be a difference, you yeah, know. But that's not that's not that don't that, that does don't not excuse, excuse it. it. No, yeah, that don't that don't excuse. Um, Dallas, Dallas, Dallas dudes always, ever since, like I said, I grew up in BT. Yeah. So I seen all the greats come through, Cap Shop and. Cap at the Bomb. Cap at the Bomb. And I seen a lot of them dudes. And man, dudes from Dallas, uh, all they do is fight for the bottom. They always fight for the bottom? Fight for the bottom, bro. Yeah, and it was so so well. Cap was from Miami. Yeah, he was. Yeah, he but, he, but he but he had the most legendary music shop in, in Dallas, but mm-hmm. maybe, maybe he's. Uh, it, it's debatable between him and George. Him and George. What about Diamond D? Diamond D had a dope. Diamond dope D had a, spot, a, but he a good he run. Fucking with Cap. 
He no, Cap Cap. had a lot of colors. Cap not on, being man. from here, Rick Ross and all of them were pulling up coming yeah, to see man. Cap. I, lo- I love Diamond D, but I love and, <laughs> it. Was, and it I seen Diamond too. I seen Diamond in his you beginning. Come I, knew, up. I knew Diamond when he was having skate set. Well, I didn't know him like that, but I know he was having he was part of his drug. skating rings yeah, and stuff yeah, like yeah. that. But he wasn't fucking with Cap. Nah, man, you know, yeah. Big T, you think that's probably probably one of the most monumental places when you think of Dallas? Yeah. Like, for, especially for the hood stories, yeah. for sure. Yeah, D- Big T is uh, definitely a mecca. Um, Little World. Little World. Wimpy's. Wimpy's. Odom's. Um, Where's Little World? It's that's South Dallas. South South Dallas. Dallas. Okay, the only uh, thing I know is Big T, Malcolm that's Mexican. it. Now, you're talking about just, uh, you done been through that with me, you just didn't realize yeah. you was there. Yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, you know, Griff's, Pleasant Grove, yeah. Wingfields. Uh, Man. You talk about this. Who has the best burgers in, in, in Dallas? Uh, Wingfields. I mean, because I'm right, they right around the corner from where I grew up. You <laughs> know what I'm saying? Some people yeah. say Griff's. Griff's is good, you know what I'm saying? But they ain't fucking with Wingfields. <laughs> they, got, they got fat burgers down here now. Yeah, well that that ain't that ain't hold. That ain't us. That ain't hold. I, I I mean I ate fat burgers. I I I I think it's a cool little thing, but as far as burgers size and stuff like that, well, you got to take me to Winfield so I can try y'all it out. Gotta and have see. Winfield. You ain't took the woman to Winfield. No, nah, man. Be honest with you, man. Certain places I just don't feel like exposing her to. You know, she Jamaican, and so we want to keep her. You know. <laughs> <laughs> now, now I gotta ask you about boxing, man. So I mean, because you 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 come in here, you know, and I know y'all love Earl Spence, and uh, is he dodging? Who is y'all? I'm just saying, people. Do you love Earl Spence? I love Earl Spence, but, but still, you, you don't just say the wrong me, thing. You I won't come wanna, up in this moment. You don't say the wrong thing. You we better be good. You this. better be good. Hey, hey, whether he coming or not, it ain't gonna be exposed. A lot, a lot of people they don't come, but I still nah, I'm a fan. He'll come through. Uh, he'll just come tell through. me about about you and Earl and and how you even. Uh, built that relationship because on your show that's one of the first things I noticed you know what I mean that you had a relationship with Earl Spence I mean I wouldn't call it a a relationship I would just say like when I was in prison um, I was I was I was locked up with a dude that was one of the city's greatest boxers his name was Greg Corbin okay and uh, and he won what happened with Greg is he um, he caught a case right before the Olympics where he would get to shine and got wow. 10 years in the field. Damn. Mm. Ended his boxing career. And it, it didn't end it because he came home and he 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 got some fights. He got he made money in boxing again. Oh, so he did. He okay. came home he came home because of the crack law and he's made he's been he's fought on he matter of fact he fought on one of Earl Spence's undercard. Okay. At the Cowboy Stadium in front of tens of thousands of people. That's oh, good. Oh. But um but he but he but the prime of his career he lost it. You know what I'm saying, mm-hmm. and so um, I remember uh, I remember saying to him, I was like, my my cousin is Earl Spence's my 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 first cousin and Earl Spence's sister are best friends. Okay, and so when I would be calling home, they would be telling me that you know uh, Earl Spence is this is such a her, her brother Ebony brother is uh is about to be he gonna be gonna he just got into boxing this the is next the, big thing she they weren't telling me he was the next big thing they mm-hmm. were just excited that he had got into In boxing. boxing and then my cousin kept saying like he's good he's gonna be good now I, Earl didn't get into boxing till he was like 15 wow. so but at the same time I'm down there we talking about boxing I'm his number one fan you said you know when you in prison Everything that's going on in the outside, you see, we got we got this just out of the soda yeah, shit, yeah, yeah, yeah. cracking heads. You know yeah, what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, yeah. And so uh, he he kept going, and by the time I got out of prison and it got settled and stuff like that, he was um, doing his thing. Oh, and he hadn't he hadn't blew up yet. You know what I'm saying? He just was just growing and growing and growing. He just just kind of like he got fight. He just kind of kind of like how he fight. He just got stronger and stronger and stronger. And um, and then I then I met him, of course, and you know I was like, you know, I'm such and such cousin. We built a rapport from there, you know what I'm saying? And uh, and you know, it was just that was just a it was just a rapport from there, and you know, the rest history. Yeah, the rest history. What about uh, was it Derek? What's Derek, his, yeah, Derek, Derek. Yeah, Derek. Yeah, that's Derek. your boy too. That's my that's my guy. I that's love your Derek. boy. That's love y'all. Yeah, that's home. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's home yeah, team. Yeah, I'm yeah. watching you. Yeah, Derek is uh, he Good. Beckley and Sainer too. Yeah, yeah, he, he Beckley and Sainer too. Uh, him and his brother Maurice, they got a phenomenal thing. They doing. Derek is actually, we actually have a fighting style here. Wow! And Derek is a is is the teacher of that. He knows. He's him. the he is he he's the sensei. He's not just a trainer. 
He's a teacher. And he helps uh, the mother, them twin boys down there, too. He, he helps Jamil. Jamil, he's okay. Jamil's coach and trainer and teacher. Um, he completely reformatted Jamil Charlo's fighting style. Um, uh, but Jamil Charlo, he got a new one, a uh, new kid, Frank Martin, who's going to be a beast as well. And uh, he's he's already finna fight one of the most dangerous possible fights that he could when he's fighting Michelle Rivera in, I think, December the 17th. So, you know. That's hard. Derrick got two unified champions. One undisputed champion in Jamel Charlo, which he don't get enough credit because he actually got that completely out of the mud. Wow. And he got a unified three-belt champion in Earl Spence. And the only reason why Spence ain't undisputed is because he hasn't uh, fought Crawford. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. You know what I'm saying? And Crawford got the last piece of the puzzle. That was when I said Bo Mack hit my line, that was his trainer in my life. Damn. You know what I'm saying? You got to tell me how you started. Uh, That's what uh, I was fighting. trying to figure yeah. out. Because you got out of prison. You met him. Mm-hmm. So what made you get into the boxing? How, well, the, just the social media aspect of it? Yeah. Or, we're, we're part or of got, I, I want to know okay. how you got into it, period. Okay, well, check this out. Okay, I, and they go boxing down there. Were you fighting when <laughs> you were in prison? Yeah. I had fights in prison. Why in prison. niggas yeah. down to the ground? No, but when I mean, you had fights in prison and you like boxing, but... At that point, had you ever been in a ring or no, a boxing no ring. gym? Yeah. No ring I'm like talking that. professionally, but I'm talking go to boxing gym and yeah, be I like went to the gym. But before that, but I was never a professional right. or amateur or any of that type. But you, of but you, but he had a style down in the penitentiary. <laughs> it's called a penitentiary style. <laughs> yeah, every unit guy. But how I got into the <laughs> right the, the boxing. The, the boxing was uh, <laughs> how I got into it was uh, like. Like I told y'all, I was telling y'all about my, my partner Greg. And right. so I wanted to when I when I came home, one of the things that was on my mind is that there is not there was not a lot of representation for the South period. Mm-hmm. Not just Texas, Texas, but the South period. Mm-hmm. And so I was like, man, I wanna make sure that these dudes is getting seen. And then I fit, found out about YouTube. Mm-hmm. And I seen that YouTube was kind of innovative as That's far hard. as boxing. Mm-hmm. And this is years ago. Yeah, yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. Uh and so uh and so I wound up uh, 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 just following the YouTube channels, and I cre- just went on there and was watching and stuff like that. But, man, when I got on there, the racism was so man. hard because in boxing, it's so much tribalism. Yeah. You know, and like I said, it, it, everybody's segregated. You know, you have... You know, it ain't just no Latino thing. It's like the Mexicans support Mexicans, the Dominicans support Dominicans, mm-hmm. the 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 Asian support not even Asian, the Filipinos support Filipinos, mm-hmm. the Japanese for it's it's extreme Split. tribalism Split. in boxing. And so one of the things that I I seen when I was trying to build this thing up as far as for the South, it was there was a lot of black fans, but there was no black cohesion. Man, that's hard. It I was like no it. black cohesion. And so it was a it was a dude on the internet at the time, and his name is Seven A Sports TV. Okay. And Seven A Sports TV is which is my co-host on Trio Boxing yeah, Talk. Yeah, now. correct. I seen um, him. He was uh, he had a round table called the LDBC, the Lions Den Boxing Community. Yeah, yeah. Which is, and um, and 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 it, and it was they was just talking about boxing and stuff like that and and having round tables and stuff with different people and things like that but the racism got super bad during the Floyd Mayweather and Manny Pacquiao situation yeah yeah it got like when you leave a comment on the internet, people putting bananas and monkey faces behind yeah. you and all kind. It was bad. Wow. You know, you can't if you said you like the black fighter, they was putting all kind of racial racial innuendos or racist comments and behind you. And so one of, at the time it was a black content creator that did boxing as well. And um he had a big it was he had a big platform. Mm-hmm. And so um and, and but I, he wasn't in the south; he was somewhere else. Yeah, he was somewhere else. But he, he but he, a lot of people know him. Okay. And so, some, some one of the races left a comment on my uh, behind my post on one of his things about me possibly liking Gary Russell Jr. Damn. or Floyd Mayweather or something. And I let the races have it. But and on YouTube, a lot of these dudes just want people to follow them. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they just want people to subscribe to them and stuff like that. And so he kind of, I ain't gonna say he. Gorilla check me, but he kind of like, hey man, you know, don't worry about them saying all this stuff. You know, you shouldn't. He didn't say nothing to the races. He said something to me, and so black fight fan 
was because in a lot of these dudes, they in boxing, especially black dudes, they want fairness. They want to promote unbiasedness. But racist people, a lot of these not other, they ain't going to say racist people. All these non-black people, mm -hmm. they don't give a damn about being fair, biased, or not. But uh, Canelo will get on there and say, I'm picking him because he's the Mexican. Right. You know, I'm picking uh, Manny Pacquiao. I say, I'm picking him because he's Filipino. For, they're for their they're race. They're for their un unapologetic. Right. They're for their race. The only people but that. But you have black folks who was for their race, too. But that wasn't like that back then. Okay. Black people just got just woke up when George Floyd died. Mm -hmm. Black people just woke up when, when, when Dr. Umar came out, you know, talking this stuff. Black people have been asleep. Uh, so back then, there was a they was doing what they do majority. Mm -hmm. Oh man, you know we we fair, we ain't on that, you know all right. that old type of stuff. And so that enraged me so much that Black Fight Fan was born. Mm. It wasn't about no money. It wasn't about like you know it wasn't about it wasn't about no money. It wasn't about no YouTube. It wasn't about nothing. It was just I'm gonna create. A black place for black fight fans mm -hmm. to come together and, and, and don't be have to deal with all of and that. don't have to deal with none of that stuff. And at the, around that around that time, Seven A Sports TV he had a bigger platform than me. I didn't. I wasn't that big. I just was just getting started. And he created. He took the LDBC and he and he was tired of the racism as well. And so he created. He said, "Well, I'm tired of all the racism." I'm going to create a, a group called it. I mean, I'm going to, if you're in the LDBC, if you want to not talk about boxing and not worry about people uh, being racist towards you or hate feel towards you and you want a place to talk about boxing, hashtag LDBC after all your videos. And so that's what we did. Wow. And so we, I came in, one of the brothers brought me in to the LDBC and I, I hashtag LDBC but my channel, Black Fight Fan, my name, because it was called that before Trill Boxing Talk, was all based on rage. Ugh. Rage in response to racism. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, they had to sit me down. I had close to five, 6,000 subscribers, and they had to sit me down to tell me to monetize my channel. I was just going off of pure five, 6,000 subs in. I didn't give a damn about no money, mm -hmm. nothing. I was just smashing You wanted to racism. make a change. Smashing races, <laughs> smashing, you know, make it, you know, I, that's what it was about and promoting black fighters. Because when we when we first started doing this, they would use terms and say things like black fighters don't sell. They ain't got no support. They ain't got no fans. Mm. But ever since we've organized and collectivized, when these dudes sit down at the negotiation table, that's no longer a thing. Mm -hmm. Because if you come in my live, you come in my live on Monday through Friday, shit, you can see. 1,300 people. Yeah, there. you got them in there every time. And, you know, and the majority of them people is black and they dropping money. That's you know hard. That's hard. And it's a statement every time I come on. But that's, that didn't exist before. Do that's, you have a lot of people who come on your show or come uh, um, follow your platform who is not black? Uh, yeah. Yeah, I do. I do. I have, I have of course, I have Mexican support, uh, particularly here. Mm -hmm. I have a lot of Mexican support here. Just, just dudes that just ride with D-Town. Just ride with Dallas, ride with Houston. Just Texas dude. You know okay. what I'm saying? But it's other dudes. Like, we got a couple of guys that uh, from different places. But my my non-black support is typically going to come from Texas Mexicans. You know what I'm saying? I want to ask you about, is that fight ever going to happen between them? You know, you, you told me something. It didn't happen the way you told me. But What you talking about? <laughs> you told me Earl Spence and that Crawford fight Crawford. was going to happen. But you didn't tell me the truth. But. <sighs> I mean, what happened? I mean, what is this thing ever gonna happen, or, or, or is it just over with? Man, I'm gonna tell you. I, Let's I, be real. I want I want Earl to walk away from the situation. Really? Yeah, because I mean, listen, I'm gonna tell y'all something. Crawford's people, they came to me and said because Earl already had momentum before yeah. Crawford. Mm -hmm. You know, and they said they said, man, let's get some popcorn popping. These are the terms they use. Let's get some popcorn popping. Let's build this fight because. The fight wasn't that big, but in order for it to create a buzz, you got to get some going back and forth on the internet, get people talking about it and stuff like that. And so that's what we did. That's what we've been doing for the past three, four years. Right. Everybody want to see that fight. That's what we've been doing, you know? And so when we get to the point to where the fight is, is ready, where Earl done did what he said he was going to do, which mm -hmm. is get three of the titles and Crawford got his one bill. <coughs> they sit down and they have negotiations and stuff like that. And Crawford, he makes a call and says that he wants to, he can y'all give me some money to fight this other dude? He asked for it. <coughs> so he he pulls out of the negotiation. 
Wow. He pulled out of the negotiations. Earl Spence was all in on that fight. Mm -mm. He was all in. He wanted every. He wanted the. Uh, I mean, he 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 was all in. He didn't have no plan B. Why do you think he pulled out? Crawford. Mm -hmm. I don't. Think he, I, I, <coughs> he wasn't ready. You don't until, think he was up ready? Until, up until recently, I don't think Crawford really wanted to fight Earl. I, I, I used publicity. to think. I used to think that he wanted it, but when he did that, that think was. Think he's scared? I do. I do. I didn't think that at first. I didn't think that it was at first. I thought he was extremely confident. But when he pulled that move, uh, look, when Earl sent him the contract, he held it for two weeks and, mm. and then popped up with another fight. And Earl ain't even got an opponent. Like right now, Earl Spence is, was scrambling to get an opponent. Right. You know, so he can make uh, hit that lick before yeah. the time yeah. frame. Yeah. 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 yeah, You know what I'm saying? Yeah, that's stipulation. But he, but he was waiting on Crawford. Mm -hmm. They've been negotiating since Earl fought August in April. Right. Two weeks after Earl said that on the deal, they he had his people on Crawford. That's crazy, man. I mean, uh, so what's next for Earl? Did you? Uh, I mean, I, I would say I, I don't want to say, but I would say Keith Thurman, which is which is which, in all honesty, may be a bigger fight than Crawford. Why you say that? Because Keith Thurman is more popular than Crawford. He's a bigger name than Crawford. Uh, he don't have the belt, but he's a bigger name than Crawford. I think I see y'all over the. Uh What's that boy name that I messed his name up last time and CC tried to get on me? Uh, De or Deontay Wilder. Deontay Wilder. Yeah, we was with you Wilder. Were, yeah, what's up with that? Love I mean, y'all hanging out with Deontay. He ain't been on Boss Talk yet. He's supposed to be pro black and all this black <laughs> and black and we black as hell over here. I'm trying to figure out when this nigga gonna pull up. I got the whole family over here. I'm gonna flash this back. I got CC over. I showed you love. I now I got black over here. Look, nigga, we got to fly you in. We will. Yeah. <laughs> Wilder. Uh, I like him. Wilder. Wilder's a. Great man, man. I love Wilder. Uh, we went, me and CC, and we went and and, and seven eight. We all went out to oh, his house oh. out there for. We spent me and CC spent about three or four days out there, Tuscaloosa, Alabama, beautiful. Mm -hmm. But we we love Wilder. I mean, that's just Wilder is one of the people that we actually one of the people we actually um like can that we can say that we we was from the ground up with to where people were saying he didn't have no fans. Into where now he's he's a uh, 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 a lot man he's he's up. So when I go through there, I can go and stop through there and interview him. Yeah, you can. Yeah, because yeah, I'm yeah, definitely going up, through there. Pop up. Now, I'm gonna go oh, through there in this city. I'm gonna pull up you on say it. the key word. You say black or CC or seven eight. He's gonna pull up on <laughs> seven eight you. man. I need to interview him yeah, too. He now. gonna pull up on you. He gonna yeah. pull up on you. Yeah, Wilder's a good. He he loves his people. That's hard. He that's what that's what my brother told me. He loves his people and he supports his people. Wow, yeah. that's hard, man. So, um, and and I was told by uh, I, I was told last time he made he's getting back into it and everything. Oh, he already came back. You didn't yeah, see I, that? I didn't see the. He, he had a came fight. Back. Yeah, yeah. Well, it, it, it did it, he have a fight? It was something like a fight. That's probably why without, it wasn't the, no it wasn't no competition. List, I ain't watching nothing but the big one. He he had he broke a record with the least amount of punches. One minute thrown, least amount of punches thrown in a boxing match. For real? He hit the dude one time. He put him to sleep. Put him in a sent him in a com, uh, convulsion and. He was I got I got to get up on him more, man, because my brother he tell me about all this stuff, and I be so caught up into what I'm doing, yeah. that I be missing stuff just like you just said earlier. Yeah. Like you, I just block everything out. Yeah, yeah, and you working. But, yeah, you, yeah, but I still that's my people though. I, I try to hit every avenue. That's what boss talk is about. I can yeah. talk to anybody at any time about anything. Well, Wilder, you know, what Wilder's the man though, man. You know, I you know I, I love Earl and them, but you know Wilder is a heavyweight. Yeah, yeah. So he, you know, Wilder. He do numbers, big numbers, big numbers, big numbers. Yeah, so I'm you just know? glad that y'all, you know, y'all linked like y'all did, and that y'all so impressive in his in his career, and that he rocked with y'all like oh, that. Yeah. That's hard, yeah. man. Yeah. And and the community you built, you know what I mean. I knew it was a reason behind it. I seen all the the hoopla. I would look at it. I'm like, dang, everybody rocking with it, man. They on here. They throwing out uh, what they call it when they give you a. a, 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 a I think you gave her a uh, uh, super chat. Super yes. chat. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you forgot about that. We no, was in, I what was we at Shreveport? Yeah, yeah, we was in Shreveport. I think you was the first one to ever give her anything. Yeah, my yeah, first yeah, yeah, yeah. She ain't never had super nothing. Chat. She ain't got nothing. I'm on there throwing all of these different videos up, and uh, we jump on the live, and she excited. I got me one. I'm like, that one what? <laughs> Super chat. I said, oh, she that was on your birthday. Yeah. Sure was. Man, that's hard. Thank you so much, yeah, man. man. Thank you. I don't think she got another one since. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, that's a that's a that's a chain reaction. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah your people, yeah, yeah, yeah. I got a couple that day. 
I remember somebody else yeah, did that day. Yeah, you got to start that chain. You know what I'm saying? So let me just tell me, how did you even build up the understanding? Because that's some of the stuff that we 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 face a challenge. Yeah. We face an understanding, like how to even go into that even part. We don't even deal with that. So we don't like, go man, live don't, very often. I don't we be, be going so busy live with like everything. That. Else. Do you go live every day? Yeah, I go live. I don't, but I don't drop. But I don't drop videos like I should. I should so drop, I should drop more are. more un, like like y'all be doing. Yeah. I should drop more yeah. videos like that, but I don't because so I don't have time. Yeah. It's either or is that yeah. they doing? Yeah. But I'm like, how can we master both? Is it? Well, I'm sure can, other people can do both because y'all look y'all y'all got it. Y'all be but me. I just me. I just I have so much going on. I have so much. I mean, I'm gonna be honest with you. It's beautiful to be able to give an hour and a half a day to this shit and, and leave. Wow, you know what I'm saying. Um, I'm just because I've seen because I've been doing this so long. I've seen dudes go crazy, you know. I've seen people lose their mind, you know, into this trying stuff. to figure it trying, out. Not just trying to figure it out, but trying to appease other people. Yeah, and it's yeah. not about that. It's about like I said, I when I started doing this, it wasn't about no money. You know what I'm saying? I just was. It was literally my emotions drove me. Yeah. You know, and so now it's just like, okay, I want to make sure I got time for my kids. Like one of my daughters in volleyball, one of my daughters in competitive cheer. You know what I'm saying? I got a woman and stuff like that that like like to lay up under me and oh, cook damn. for me and you all that? that type of stuff. <clears throat> so man, I I don't you got I just, you a good woman. Yeah, a great woman. A <laughs> great woman. Yeah. So you know, I I don't I don't uh, it's I. I have to allocate my time, you know. I have to allocate my time, go to the gym, all that. I have to have those things. Really. I'm going to go into that a little bit, but are you still alive? No. Okay. Not at all. Um, all right, so when you and Cece met, mm -hmm. you were her manager, right? Uh, no, no, I, not, I didn't meet as her manager. Uh, I'm just checking to see what, meet, what, what fell in there first. Was it relationship first, then management no, afterwards? They were business partners at no, first, I didn't, wasn't I, no, I did, no, I met, I met Cece by... Uh, Cece tell this story better than I can. Okay, well, go ahead. Tell me, tell me your story. Uh, I just reached out to Cece because I seen her and I thought she was a talented. Right. Uh, I seen Cece on. She was doing something with Rick Ross, free, Freeway Rick Ross. Cece mm -hmm. is a. Uh, you could still say she re Rick Ross manager. You know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? She was Freeway Rick Ross's manager for a long time, and um, and I, she was just moving around. And Cece is very militant, very militant, very organized, very structured. And uh, and I and and I was looking at her and I was like, mm, you know, this is the. And then I had her her backstory. I heard her backstory, and I was like, wow, that's dope. So I reached out to her. I was like, hey, sister, you know what I'm saying? Da da da. Woo, woo, woo. And Cece, you know, she called. She hit me back, and we started talking and interacting. And I and I had the trill another another show that we were doing called Trill uh, Trill trill, yeah. trill. It was Trill in the morning at the time, uh -huh. but. Because we was about to go through the pandemic and all that, I knew stuff was gonna set the shit down. I said, "Hey, sister, we, I got an idea, and I want to bring a woman in. Excuse me, bring a woman in to to because it was just me and seven eight at first, and so uh, she was like, she was like, all right, you know what I'm saying, and so we we did it, and we we just grew from there. And after a year of us just kind of working together and stuff like that, um. It just kind of turned into she got something it. more. She got that. Nigga. She wooed him in. Got that nigga after about a year. <laughs> got that nigga. Lock that nigga down right quick. <laughs> <laughs> no man. I mean, it's it's a it's a beautiful thing, man. When you can find somebody that you can even talk to, man. In this world we live in, you know, right. it's tough trying to figure out and find companionship. That's one thing. That's one thing. Uh, when I think of God, I think about companionship. So it's a great thing, actually. But to even be able to work and do the same thing. Yeah. You guys, great chemistry when I watch you guys together, you know, talking to different people, going back with different situations, yeah. subjects on boxing. You know, you, you don't see a woman even be able to interact like that about yeah. that, you know, so that's yeah. hard. But I mean, but I mean, but that, I mean, even with your, you and your wife, I, mm -hmm. I hope a lot of women um, learn from these sisters. Yeah. Because it's very important that you find somebody that you can, y'all don't have to agree with everything, but y'all should be able to at least have a dialogue. Yeah. And when you can have a dialogue, it can manifest into so many great things. I love Boss Talk 101. Boss Talk 101. You know what I'm saying? Being able to have a dialogue with your your significant other is powerful. And a lot of people don't even share that. You've seen in the pandemic where people was forced to go mm -hmm. home and look at their mate. Yeah. And where, where all the material stuff didn't mean nothing, you can't show everybody your big house and yeah. Yeah. drive your cars and stuff like that. It's just you and her. Mm-hmm. 
and a lot of people got a divorce and got yep. separated and got split up and during that situation just because they had to look at each other and they yeah. couldn't have a dialogue. Yeah, um, I, I, my, my base is built around God, so I went straight back to what I know. Exactly. We're building the foundation and making sure that that right there is, is the center and forefront for the family. And it just got a little more intense, to be right. honest with you. Right. And that's right. what causes things and to grow. And you saw that. You yeah. saw that. I mean, even, even we're, talking about, we're talking about the negative, but we've seen the, 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 the couple that was based on that they had a spiritual sitting. Mm -hmm. Those people built businesses together. That's right. And they didn't go. They didn't go back to work after mm -hmm. the pandemic. Mm -hmm. They mm -hmm. they had their own Our own situation situation going. going you That's know, real. because so. a lot of people realize that once they were forced to be with each other and interact and figure out how to make this work, that they realize that you know what I think we can do better doing this together rather than I'm working over here, you're working over here, and we have no time for each other. Right. Rather, when you work together, you find a time. But then you still put work in it, right? Wow. Right. Uh, is it Devin Haney? Yeah. How did that? How did, how is he doing? Devin is great. He, he, he that's 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 a, that's a young king right there. He's a boss. Um, he's the undisputed lightweight champion of the world. I mean, he got all the bills. Tank ain't got no belt. What about the other kid? Ain't that? no Javante. That he ain't got no belt. Yeah, but then he ain't the your boy had told me uh, cool. what is that two years ago, almost a year and a half ago, when I interviewed uh, Freeway, that Austin got kid. Is, oh, kid Austin is he yeah, able he to? Is he doing good? Yeah, he, he he did. Uh, kid Austin did a deal with Golden Boy. Okay. Uh, we talked to him. He was on the show uh, a few weeks back. Okay. Um, but Devin Haney is the undisputed. Undisputed, no, no, ain't no, no He got every him. belt known to man. Wow. Ain't nobody else. Ain't no. He's the king. We on whenever boxing stuff getting ready to come on, we king. gonna bring him on him. Let him talk about the fight before it happened. I mm -hmm. get him back over here, yeah. lock him just like CC did. Mm -hmm. Get him down <laughs> <laughs> and get him to come over oh, and talk yeah, before the fight. Here, you hear me? All I gotta do is call CC and ask what she, I can't do what she did, but I can. Call <laughs> <laughs> Boy, you hell, man. <laughs> Thank you, man. So, how can people get a hold to you, man? If they're trying to link up with you, man, uh, like just to, you know, just to try to follow you and sub subscribe to your channel, trying to support what you do for all of the, you know, the the culture that you've built in boxing. Mm -hmm. uh, you can, on YouTube, I'm at Trill Boxing Talk, okay. um, and uh, on Instagram, you can follow me at Black Fight Fan, Black okay. Fight Fan, and uh, that's my YouTube. I mean, excuse me, Instagram. And that's it, man. I just on Instagram and YouTube. That's it. I want you to get Derek over here for me, and I need to get Earl Smith Jr. over here eventually. I know they linked up. They know you. So we, if I don't get them, I got you. They in trouble now. I, 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 I got I, me a machine. I, I call Derek. I call him. I uh, think Derek will come. I really yeah. never just never got you to should. reach out Derek to him. Is, Derek is a true Oak Cliff dude. Yeah. He is He is the, he the pride of Oak Cliff. Man. He the pride of Oak Cliff. Well, I thought you was the pride of Oak no. Cliff. No, I don't. I don't take pride in. I mean, <laughs> Derek is the pride of Old Cliff. He got he got a clothing line, Old Cliff. Uh, he is his his he 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 is that. I want to ask about that style of bo boxing that he teaches. Yeah, yeah, I need yeah. I need to talk to him about yeah, that. Yeah, he uh he was Derek was a was a, a boxer himself. Wow, he was a boxer himself, and he and he had a winning record. Wow. He, he, he just didn't get the uh, notoriety that that he should have. Yeah, that he should have got. But, that's all right, but he definitely got. Sometimes you might not do it. Uh, in the in in the way that you felt like you was gonna do, it, but you still fulfill and live your dream. Right. It, it may not come in what you think that it's gonna be, but it still ends up evolving into something that you could have never expected. Right. So that's the hard part about how evolution and change go when it come down to spiritualism. Yeah, yeah I hit you with a little dope. Yeah, I look. take it, bro. <laughs> I take it. I take it. I but man, it. thank you so much, man. We love you, bro. Thank you, like man. I said, I did, too, I, did I do you justice? I hope I did you justice. I, I got to get you back. Anytime there's a big fight going yeah, on, yeah, anytime no something going on with sports, I'm going to be calling you and saying, hey, not sport. I'm boxing. boxing. Boxing, that's it, That's bro. a sport. So that's I'm going to call you when it's a big fight going yeah. on, no matter where. Yeah. I know you... You yeah. homed into it because that's what y'all yeah. do, man. I'm, I'm yeah. with. I'm, I'm. I'm. I'm always gonna support Boss Talk. Whoa! So whenever, you whenever. heard that? I heard it. Write it down. Uh, now, well, we got no, it recorded. Record okay, it. okay. That nigga I'm, said I'm it, man. That nigga said Bowstock. it, man. <laughs> <laughs> Look, man, I don't even do interviews. No, nah, nah. you the first. Okay, nah, well, that's I mean, good. Unless, unless you like, I've done interviews with people that from my group 
from the boxing. Yeah, uh, but you usually don't come out. I don't, I don't. I don't do. You heard what I told that. you the other day when I called you. The, you know that. You know, I don't do no. <laughs> I, I told him. I said, man, I was riding into this Best Buy parking lot and God spoke to me and said, I need to get you on this show. <laughs> you know, I don't talk to nobody. Man. I, I like. I like. I, this time we, I'm with my kids and or, you know we chilling. We 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 laid up in it and chilling, man. man yeah. well, just, just thank you for coming on the show and keep us in your prayer. Me and my wife and my oh, yeah. family, man. man. And I do the same for and you. Again, man. I'm CC. so proud of y'all. Man. Thank you, man. So and we gonna, we gonna, don't stop, man. We're gonna definitely you call you stop. if we need to borrow some money or all that good stuff. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna call you and you. Yeah. Check it, man. Hey, man. Say, man. It's been another great segment of Boss Talk 101. What a boss's talk. And we out. Man.